Thank you, sir. So once again, I'm thankful to Delhi University and uh, one of uh, uh, very eminent personality in our field, Dr. Rajesh Singh, sir, and Dr. Rajiv Nayan, a dear friend Ashish, and many participants who are joined through uh, YouTube and some other platform as well. So as we all know, information retrieval and online information resources, platforms, these all things are very much interconnected with the education field, with the learning scenario. And since we have all have observed this COVID-19, so entire world is definitely shifting towards some other resources, some other channels or alternative mechanisms. Though there has been a lot of uh, action in the open uh, source, open access, open movement and open education systems as well. As uh, I was, asked about this particular topic. So I was very much glad that I could be able to uh, combine two different aspects, two different components of information services, learning scenarios, and education as well. Open access as well as open educational resources. That's how this particular topic, which is meant for retrieving information for learning purposes in higher education is meant. So why these uh, different platforms, alternative mechanisms and open systems are very much popular or maybe the need of the hour in today's context? Because everybody is facing since last century the concepts of innovation and transformation. We all are transitioning through different phases of learning as well as whatever platforms, mechanisms, and services are available, not only for the libraries, but also for the users with the help and collaboration from the faculty members. And why these are significant? Because this innovation and transformation, which are key components for the transitioning, they are relevant for the customers of the library means they are relevant for the university and college campuses, users, which are mainly uh, can be uh, stated as students, research scholars, and other information seekers in such kind of educational scenario. When we talk about the education in itself or learning services, why and how this library uh, component comes into picture? Because when the library staff, they are skilled and they are providing a variety of library services, definitely they try to establish a collaboration between the faculty members and the library itself. Without that collaboration, understanding the library customers or learners of the universities and campuses, which may be online or offline, physical or virtual in any form, it is not possible. So we are all witnessing a shift or transition from being book centric to user centric, means from material centric to the recipient centric. So all these basic or fundamental issues which are here in the entire higher education scenario related with the open movement as well as the education system is really providing some uh, paths or some, uh, uh, I should say, uh, ways for creation of responsive and con convenient services. Why these are required? Because it is not something like uh, books are there or uh, courses are there or some material is there, but it requires some kind of anticipation from the people who are responsible for imparting learning or facilitating the learning and the users or students or learners who are the receivers of those responsive and convenient learning services. Everything begins with a challenge. With this COVID, we all can relate to the challenges and which are very much uh, prevalent in digital age. How they are required? Because these challenges really give an opportunity to explore what are other agendas, what are other mechanisms, what are other alternatives for the institutions which are meant for 
giving education, giving learning solutions. And when we talk about libraries, definitely the libraries have been reshaping and rethinking about the services which have been continuously given by these uh, organizations for the users. And with this COVID, with this new scenario, everybody is thinking how to uh, explore, how to manage and how to retrieve most of the information which are really relevant and contributing to their learning activities. So these have been the challenges, but every challenge really comes with a solution as well. So here comes the library user or the learner into picture. How it is possible because the close involvement of library users is a very much required. Why? Because they give their feedback, they interact with the library through different mechanism. It may be some online platform, it may be day-to-day -day routine complaints or feedbacks or suggestions or why it is required because designing process of technology-based services is really meant for users. So their involvement, the learner's involvement is very much required here. When we talk about user innovations, definitely they are very much fruitful for the product and service innovation. What is product here? The product is learning tool, the learning mechanism, and the kind of requirements which are really needed for users. So we take example of user or learner as a co-creator, where the participation areas may include the service design activities, the service development activities, and definitely there are several potential incentives which are really identified. Why these are very much important? Because these kind of activities and products and services really motivate the customers, means learners and library users, definitely because of them, they are involved as co-creators or co-producers of the information, learning materials, and different mechanisms as well. And how it is possible? Because it is the enhanced self-esteem and greater opportunities. Without greater opportunities and self-esteem, definitely it is impossible to have a new designing, uh, an innovative environment, or anything which really involves the learners as the participation component as well as co-creator components. What may be the challenges related to involving users as resource in idea generation? How it is possible? Because of customer selections, then creation of incentives, to foster participation and capturing the knowledge. These are certain challenges which have been really related with the involvement of learners, which function as a resource in generation of idea. Because they are the users, they are the learners, so they give the best feedback, they give the best suggestion also in the form of sometimes complaints or sometimes appreciation. So as user, they are required at product or service testing, whatever learning material has been developed. So to identify problems in the development phases, this is very much significant. Then for supporting the product or service. So I'm quoting here, expert customers may discover new ways of product usage as well as shortcuts and other methods to enhance the overall value of the product. So we can observe here how important it is. This component as a learner or customer or user, this component is very much significant. This really provides insights while designing or service testing of any learning material or tool. What are different components? Definitely employee creativity. We can talk about here library staff then developing knowledge innovation culture in libraries. What are the changing user demands which really compel different libraries, different learning centers, or those institutions which are really responsible for 
creation of those kind of information products material services regarding the innovation and finally responding to them in the shape of feedback suggestions or complaints or anything so let's come to open access these are certain factors which have led to this movement which is really age old now we can say and how it is happening around the world we we begin with the definition so this open access means that electronic scholarly articles are available freely at the point of use so this was given by keith j jeffrey how it is important because it makes us understand that freely available at the point of use it is not saying that it will be sold or it is anything else but at the point of use for the user for the learner it will be available freely then again one definition is here one observation by kingsclay open access is predicated on the reasoning that publicly funded research should be publicly available this is very much important everybody pays taxes and then again people have to spend money for uh, very costly education or learning things then this scenario comes into picture that it is a publicly funded research it is the government money so it should be available for its people government's people for wider access wider usage and reproduction of further research so open access publishing is becoming an alternative and definitely a, a popular model for disseminating research papers as well we can take example of various commercial publishers see, which have been really compelled by this movement in the last decade that they had to open this open access component in their publishing and uh, subscription model as well we can see so many uh, options at commercial publishing platforms where we can see open access open access what is available under open access and what can be published under open access mechanism at these commercial platforms so this particular definition which was given by peter suber is very much relevant even today that open access literature is digital online free of charge and free of most copyright and licensing restrictions so what make it possible is the internet and definitely the consent of the author or copyright holder so what are certain areas here on which uh, one should focus that the nature is digital availability is online different online platforms are there it is available free of charge for the users at the point of use and most of the restrictions uh, which may be copyright and licensing related they have been waived off most of the not entire but most of the so it is the availability of internet and definitely the consent and permissions from the author or copyright holder they make that information material as open access information so few other aspects are here related with the open access that it is free to read gratis okay it is free to read and it is digital then authors and copyrights holders they grant or grants to all user a free irrevocable worldwide perpetual right of access to and a license to copy use distribute transmit and display the work publicly and to make and distribute derivative works in any digital medium for any responsible purpose subject to proper attribution of authorship as well as the right to make small number of printed copies for their personal use so we can observe how many attributes are here how many permissions are given here so one can say the the quality of open access is here to propagate and perpetuate the meaning of information the acceleration of access to information it makes possible for people to get access to this kind of information these are certain models of open access publishing gold green open and hybrid journal so whenever they are 
supported through our article publication charges apc is there but it will be properly reviewed peer reviewed and the article will be available at the point of use in free manner for studying or for accessing then there is green open access which is not a publishing i should say it is not publishing it is more of the archiving kind of thing so archiving of a, scholar, a scholarly publication for public access we can take examples of many universities they have institutional repositories where uh, different papers pre prints post prints with the permission of the publishers are being submitted and they are accessible for the users so they they are those materials which are either published or will be published so with the permissions with the certain guidelines of the publisher these kind of archiving activities are taking place but there are certain journals certain platforms which provide commercial publishing means normal publishing where the article is submitted then it will be peer reviewed it may be rejected or revised or finally accepted then it will be published but in open access mechanism when the, uh, the journal is hybrid journal there will be some portions for open access mechanisms while other content in that journal would be subscription based one example is also here british medical journal then what is the mandate about open access definitely it may be a requirement by an institution funding agency or government body which has published research and those research outcomes should be made available in some kind of open access mechanism so these kind of mandate are compulsory for understanding the requirements which may be related to acceptable reuse licensing so some conditions are there but it really helps in proliferation of the information but embargo open access there may be some time period some uh, condition uh, related in one year two year three year what it is for that embargo that it uh, it will be the requirement by the publisher of record such as in archiving policy irs which are maintained at the universities at a particular time only then it will be open for public till then it will be for organizational use on intranet and this kind of delay is observed following the official publication of the document paper thesis anything so what kind of documents are there which can be made available under open access definitely peer reviewed research articles unreferred preprints which have been destined to be uh, published later on in the shape of peer reviewed research articles thesis and dissertations research data government data source code different conference presentations in the shape of form of text slides audio video any form it can be any format can be there then scholarly monographs textbooks novels stories plays and poetry or newspapers as well archival records manuscripts images including artworks photographs diagrams and maps and digitized print works also which may be in public domain and some may be under copyright but all those issues are to be dealt in advance before archiving and making it public so what are different organizations who have been involved since a long time for promoting open access we can take example of creative commons the websites are also given here i have shared these uh, their urls web addresses internet archive open archives initiatives scholarly publishing and academic resources coalition open access working group and one example from australian government open access and licensing network so these are certain standards why standards are required to maintain some uniformity to uh, exchange on different platforms to facilitate interoperability among platforms and resources so these are certain resource uh, standards which are meant to facilitate oa research publications for example counter which is code for uh, code of practice for articles then creative commons uh, crossref fundref isni sherpa 
then UCL discovery. So many examples are here, which are uh, meant for open access publication. So this open access literature is basically digital in nature and online. So, and free of charge and free of most copyright means certain, uh, some restrictions can be there, but most of the permissions are there to facilitate learning, dissemination and reusing up to a certain extent or amount. So two barriers which have been removed here, price barriers and permissions barriers. Price barriers in the shape of subscriptions or licensing fees or pay-per-view. So these kind of uh, extra visions on the part of library or individual have been taken away. When we talk about permission barriers, most copyright and licensing restrictions have been taken up. So this is how open access literature facilitates by being digital and online availability, free of charge at the point of use with most of the permissions removing the price and permissions barriers for the learner. Here one example from public Library of Science, PLOS, shorthand definition, that free availability and unrestricted use, definitely. These two elements really define the true nature of open access platforms, open access learning solutions. But there are some flexibilities like they provide commercial reuse and some of them do not, and some permit derivative work it is possible also. So few restrictions, few permissions are there. So it, it is on the side of user and learner if they want to reuse or create some derivation of the same work, they should go for understanding the policies and different permissions given under open access things, then only they can initiate. What are different definitions which are really reflecting the permissions which are hidden? For example, the Budapest, Bethesda and Berlin definition which have been given long ago, 20 years almost back, definitions uh, related to open access. And these definitions are still very much central, pivotal and influential for the open access movement. So what was the soul of this particular open access uh, resources is very much hidden in these definitions and is still relevant for the users. These are certain kind of permissions which are uh, meant for open access resources. For example, gratis open access, it removes price barriers alone. It provides free of charge, but there are most of the restrictions, okay? But when we talk about Libre OA, it removes price barriers and it uh, facilitates more permissions. It is more flexible when we compare with the gratis OA. What are certain attributes and compatibility of open access? Copyright, peer review, sometimes revenues are also generated, print versions can be there. They are really meant for preservation and quality is maintained and some indexing and other features are also available. When people talk about it is open access, it may be of less quality. There may not be peer reviewing process or some other malpractices are there. So, but it is not true. It may be true with some platforms or some journals, but the open access in itself comes with a greater responsibility because people are handling and those who wanted this movement to become successful, they are more responsible to get along with the other alternative mechanisms and purposes. So one should not think that everything is free or free may be ambiguous for people for understanding. So it is not free to produce or publish. It takes certain costs. Definitely there are finances which are involved. It is free at the point of use, but to produce that it always requires certain costs. So the cost of producing OA literature 
the savings over conventionally published literature and certain business models which are meant for recovering the cost are really dependent upon whether it is being delivered through open access journals or open access repository so these two channels are very much significant here for understanding because it is not free it involves certain cost in production in providing in creation of those platforms so it is free only at the point of use for the learner definitely open access eliminates subscription management digital rights management and certain legal expenses but how it is possible because for subscription management libraries have been very much busy for soliciting tracking renewing subscriptions then negotiation processes different committees meetings and site licensing and collecting fees as well so these many activities which have been really time consuming everybody is still facing in uh, in the libraries but these are routine processes which are related with the subscription management these are eliminated when the library go for certain products in open access manner also digital rights management for authenticating users distinguishing authorized users from unauthorized users then blocking access to unauthorized all this takes a good amount of effort from human resources of the library as well as the it cell of any university or institution then regarding the legal expenses definitely the drafting and enforcing those licenses which are always binding upon the library everything in favor of the publisher vendor or aggregator so all these things are really can be eliminated by the open access preparations so what are two primary vehicles for uh, deliberation of uh, open access uh, gold oa and green oa gold a means open access journals means the articles which have been published will be made available for the user access in free manner without any charges without any pay per view fees or subscription like that and open access repositories which are considered as green open access means archiving at, at the institution level which may be pre print post print or any other form of material which has been either published or would be published but all with the permission and under the policy of publisher so open access journals when we talk about them we can understand that access is free of charge these electronic journals really accessible across the internet on world wide web we can access as users these are financed by payments which have been made for the articles to be published sometimes the author has to pay sometimes certain institutions have made the provisions for uh, paying on behalf of the author some grants are also there also is, this is the gold route to open access so the journals published in this way are called gold journals which are published by gold publishers we can see here they they are peer reviewed so uh, let authors uh, retain their copyright they can get by on lower subsidies or fees non profit like public library of science plos and some are for profit as well like biomed central or bmc so regarding the fee and funding waive the fee for all researchers such as bmc and plos it provides libre oa and many universities maintain funds to pay publication fee when we talk about open access repositories we can see so why these are meant and how useful they really become because these open access repositories store digital duplicates of uh, published research outputs as i shared earlier pre prints or post prints as the uh, publishing policies from the platform uh, really permitting to the authors 
and these e-prints are really freely and openly available across the internet if those institutional repositories are available on internet so but these cannot be a replacement for traditional publication or open access publication because these are only archiving purposes archiving material these are not publishing platform also these exist in parallel to the publication as a supplementary form of dissemination so these are some examples of green oa open access repositories these can be categorized as organized by discipline for example archive for physics organized by institution dash for harvard we can take example here or which do not perform peer review which generally host articles peer reviewed elsewhere somewhere and some content pre prints or post prints or both mm -hmm. like peer reviewed but not copy edited and both peer reviewed and copy edited so these are certain examples like organization by institution by discipline performing or do not performing peer review or what kind of information material is being contained so these open access repositories have certain uh, benefits like we can share here the rights retention policy solve the green oa permission problem for future work there is no need for green oa policies to create any kind of loopholes or for dissenting the publishers so these points are very much significant for any author or any archiving person to understand and maintain those uh, compliance with the publishers policies and permissions so there are sometimes provisions for blanket permission for green oa but it may not be usual practice and this open archives initiative protocol for metadata really makes it interoperable so we can uh, go for a rainbow for open access like publishing color for example we can relate to gold gold for open access publishing gold journals gold oa journals gold open access publishing then all other colors are re related with the archiving practice like green green oa archiving pre print and post print but when we talk about blue archiving color it means final draft post refereeing copy that post print is archived here then yellow color archiving pre print pre refereeing and white this kind of archiving not formally supported so these are certain colors which we can associate with to understand not only the difference but also to create awareness what is gold means open access publishing formal and green and blue yellow white all these are related with the archiving activity of any institutions but certain factors are there which functions as motivations for these purposes and goals ethics research impact and cost whether everybody is following the research ethics there for the publication policy the journal side policy the authors practices also what kind of research impact this publication is creating so it is also dependent upon the reputation of journal also how much dissemination is possible and how many costs kind of costs are involved there is it saving or it is increasing when we compare gold and green open access we can find certain components on which it can be compared like what kind of options are available like for gold open access publishing it really supports open access or it can be hybrid as well it is purely open access journal or it is hybrid journal in green open access it provides link to the article the, the selection of journal can take place in an open archive so self archiving 
is also possible in green open access these kind of options are available with gold open access and green open access when we talk about access public access is possible with the final published article and access is immediate but free access in green open access it is a kind of version that authors article it may be there may be time delay in publication so we should look for the embargo period and it begins from the final date of publication when we talk about fee so open access fee is usually paid by the author on on their behalf institution or some other kind of arrangements are there also which are public usual and fair for archiving in green open access no fee is payable as publishing costs are recovered by library subscription usage authors can choose between a commercial or non commercial user license and if there is a specific license such as creative commons license which is applied applied to the article and really it determines how many permissions how many facilities are available for the reader who can use download or share the article there are certain user license formats cc by nc and d so retention of rights for reusing and doing any other thing these things are also possible so what are the differences between green and gold gold open access we can relate to the apc the final version after publication and there is no embargo period while in archiving there is embargo period but there is no apc and it is not the publication it is only archiving and facilitating the access for the users but there is another dimension like white or gray literature so it is peer reviewed published articles while gray is preprints or internal know how material in case there are uh, many interesting relationship between gray and white articles as well so one is libre and its complement is greater and uh, this libre refers to certain degrees of openness and which are orthogonal to the gold or green access gold publishing and green archiving so this the greatest work which is free to read but libre work can be free to read and reuse and remixing later so these kind of permissions are there so one can have four kind of papers which is gold libre green libre gold gratis and green gratis so these are related with the permissions which are allowed which are given related with a paper on the part of user whether they can only read or they can reuse and remix etc what may be the barriers to open access surely loss of publisher income but we can see at certain journals platforms how much the open access charges uh, i should say that <laughs> article processing charges are high we can see 200 dollars 300 600 euros these kind of fees are there and copyright also because authors and uh, other platforms they have copyright so they can uh, distribute they can reuse and they, they can remix as well with the permissions so there are certain types of open access repositories thematic we can take example as archive institutional like uh, many institutions many universities colleges they create institutional archives uh, based on certain open source softwares for example we take the space fedora and epubs where to find we can find certain platforms for example google scholar is here oyster is here core base that is belfield academic search engine jarn and dsm.in and digital commons network 
so these are so many platforms where uh, people can find certain open access literature different other links to connect with the literature and it is very much possible to find the open access content but there are certain misunderstandings about open access like that this is the only way to provide open access all or most open access journals they might be charging the publication fee most author side fees are paid by the authors themselves or publishing in the conventional journal it may close the door making the same work for open access so open access journals are intrinsically low in quality it is a misunderstanding they are also peer reviewed and high quality journals very good papers are there in open access platforms also so what are different publishing platforms related with open access movements we can take one uh, glimpse here these are certain open access standard sources for example ecma international open standards oss open standards open geo special consortium open standards dotnet and www consortium open standard these are certain open access publishing directories for directory of open access journals doaj doab uh, most of the people are aware of such platforms free medical journals highwire press institutional archives registry open door roar and roar map these are examples of open access publishing directories these are certain search engines which are very much helpful for example we have already discussed about the space belfield academic search engine then the site seer core google scholar microsoft academic search oyster and ojs so these are the mechanisms which really help users for accessing the open information and learning certain journal publishers are they are related with open access biomed central chemistry central journal plos pubmed central computational psychiatry network neuroscience open mind intech these are certain examples we can really think about open access ebooks which are available from different platforms for example doab open library intech open books project gutenberg the universal digital library million book collection open alex catalog so these are many examples and thousands of examples are here ebooks internet public library the online book page read print so these are platforms which can really help the users for accessing open access ebooks certain research networks are there for example we can take uh, research gate mendeley academia.edu my science work vivo and researchist we can take example of research gate where people really submit their work and uh, make available for users we can discuss it uh, okay consortium of open course fair for example guide iss uu open course fair consortium japan open course fair consortium ocw consortium europe ocw universia consortium then open course fair consortium on vimeo taiwan open course fair consortium and social science research network these are certain platforms which make available different open course fairs for the learners and students but how it is possible without open online learning tools there may be a limitation so these are certain examples from platforms like code academy udemy purdue owl so these kind of platforms provide open online learning tools to facilitate the access to open access resources and information 
So certain examples are here like virtual libraries and subject gateways, which are very much useful. For example, this Intuit or Internet Public Library, Hathi Trust Digital Library. These are few examples. There are millions of examples which are really providing virtual information resources, subject gateways as per the requirements and needs of the students. Some open access video lectures are here like learners tv academic earth free science videos some examples are these along with their urls which can be accessed some etd sources are also here like open access uh, this australian university thesis and dissertation diva portal ndltd these are some examples related with the thesis and dissertations open directory project uh, we can we can take example of shod ganga india and mahatma gandhi university online thesis library as well few other examples from indian open access repositories we are uh, we can see uh, different iits and csir laboratories along with nits have been contributing in uh, maintaining archiving and proliferation of open access information but how all this began in our country in india we can take uh, example from year 2000 where uh, this conference advances in information access and science communication that led to this kind of innovative uh, project in india as well and by the end of 2015 we can say approximately around 1 lakh open access articles from uh, 595 open access journals and it was ranked fourth in the world. So these kind of developments started in India along uh, two decades ago. This is one example of ICFOS, International Center for Free and Open Source Software, which was established by government of Kerala State of India. So it is an international institution promoting academic and research work and it was launched uh, along with an open access journal entitled Journal of Free Software and Free Knowledge, which publishes high quality peer reviewed journal. It is only one example. It is not everything. It is one tiny example from this open access uh, initiative and movement in India as well. These are certain Indian open access journals like Academy and in Industry Research Collaboration Center. CSIR, NISCAR journals, and so many other journals are here, like Indian Society for Education and Environment. Sankhya is also given here. Some institutional repositories, which are open access from different Indian universities are given here. We can see how many IITs and uh, NITs, NISCAR and Indira Gandhi uh, uh, Institute of uh, Development Research, Mumbai and IGNU, and so many other institutions have been very uh, active in uh, creating and providing open access institutional repositories. So we can say that creation of awareness among the students is very much important because a publicly funded research in country should reach to many people. And there is a community which has been practicing and advocating open access, open data and open education in India. This is example of National Digital Library. We can see the screenshot which is very much uh, impactful in uh, creation and uh, proliferation of open access information. This is another example of OGES. We can see journals which may be uh, accessed through their names or the subject as well. Then this is registry of Indian open access journals. A to Z list is available here. We can see uh, with the name of journal. This is another example of open science publications. These are journals from open science publications. These are few journals from indianjournals.com. So certain platforms like open JGate or free patents online, these provide free searching, downloading and certain kind of reusing, mixing kind of uh, activity with the documents as well. Some e-journals with open access, these are example like Biomed Central, Electronic Journal for Education, Free Library. These are certain examples which we can go through like Public Library of Science, 
and Springer Open. Few other Indian initiatives can be seen in the form of CEC Consortium for Educational Communication, Digital Library of India, Directory of Open Access Repositories, e Kosh, NISCAR Portal, and NPTEL as well as we can see here CEC UGC page how it is useful for the scholars to find out open access uh, information and learning as well this is another example e Kosh, a national digital repository this is how the searching can takes place at this platform browsing by title or some other links are also there we can take example of Masur university library where open access resources have been given on a website which really facilitates to users along with the routine library services. This is an example from IIT Bhubaneswar. We can see different coursewares and learning resources like e Acharya, e Kosh, e PG Patshala, free lecture videos, Harvard Open Courseware, MIT Open Courseware. So not only the Indian platforms but also international platforms are also being given here where the learners can be directed and they can access the information. Another example, this uh, Patshala, we can see here e-Patshala, e-Acharya screenshot, integrated e-content portal. Uh, users can search here. We can see different subjects are here like arts, humanities, languages, engineering and technology. So the subject-wise searching is also possible. Open journal system like Vyom, Kagol and different other options are given here. This Indian Society for Education and Environment is very much important. This, this is in this care online periodical repository, Krishi Kosh. So in the field of agriculture or material research, different platforms are there uh, with the Hindavi and so many other open ebooks are also there. We can take example here how many books are available. A big number of books from different open access uh, platforms are available here, which are really uh, beneficial for the users. This is DOAB homepage for electronic books, open access. And this is a DOAJ for directory of open access journals. So open access is available from different commercial platforms as well. For example, Springer Open, Intech Open, Intech Books, Open Science, eBrary homepage, it is a ProQuest uh, some uh, concern. Then Open Access at Rutledge or Taylor and Francis, then Oxford Open, Cambridge Open Access. This is uh, Open Access Textbooks project from publishers and Open Access Book a Program Degrider. Spark EU homepage, which is also uh, providing information for open access books along with Wiley online and open access directory. Open access film ebooks list is also available. So there are so many platforms like PubMed Central. We can see here how many millions of articles are there. This Virginia Tech library. So different university libraries, commercial platforms, Everybody is opting for green or gold, different kind of mechanisms are being provided for the users. We can see different universities are here like Cambridge, Cornell, or Spark, University of Exeter, Europe. So different Laboro University, for example. So what may be the major issues? What kind of business model should be there? And the academic reward system, particularly in India, everybody is running after this uh, API system, this three years or five years promotion system where uh, apart from the quality publication, the numbers are very much important. So these are certain factors which really lead uh, to think upon whether it is feasible and uh, beneficial or not, including what are the marketing and critical marks, what may be the IT infrastructure to access the open access literature, which is available on certain kind of intranet, internet or some other digital framework. And what may be the legal consequences if certain permissions have been, uh, somebody has uh, taken, uh, beyond those permission, then what may be the legal consequences there as well. 
so concerns and speculations really comes with a word of warning related to quality or unethical recruitment of authors some mal practices may be there so everybody has to be concerned and aware of good and bad practices and speculations relate to future like they need to contribute please like annotation by any reader or some other things so while coming to open education which is really very much fundamental for the learners it is really unfolding and how it is possible because it is a philosophy about the people they should produce share and build on knowledge as well what are different associated values it is related with global focus openness equity collaboration and definitely inclusion of the multiculturalism so how these associated values are there definitely everybody needs education and the kind of costs and mechanisms are involved they sometime hinder the access to education as well so having the equal access to education really comes with the collaborative mechanism facilities and it involves the multicultural approach among the people of the society how it can be defined as open education consortium uh, states this is the sharing which is probably the most basic characteristic of education education comes with the sharing knowledge insights and whatever information with others which really brings the new knowledge it generates new skills ideas and better understanding for the users learners and society as well and relating to open educational resources what are these these are certain learning materials which can be modified or enhanced with the permission so some kind of uh, these oers waive some of the copyright associated or there may be some supporting legal tools like creative common licenses and these are meant for freely access reusing translating and definitely modification kind of thing is as also associated what are certain examples for oer these are some full courses course module syllabi lectures some homework assignments quizzes these are certain examples related with the pedagogical materials as well including games simulations and lab or classroom activities what are different characteristics as we can see three components are here first is social then moral and finally economical because education is considered as a shared enterprise and what is the moral picture behind it it should be functioning as a common good so education as a common good then economical it should function as commodity now it is the way information has been considered as a commodity the education is also considered as a commodity and it was given by one scientist in year 2000 13 what are different benefits it uh, provides uh, learning material with the application of open licenses it permits educators for collaboration to collaborate on oers and uh, to ensure consistency among the materials and to supplement the education for the masses so here comes the moocs in picture what are these massive open online courses which are accessible to anyone with a computer or access to the internet so with a device and internet connection there are so many platforms which can be used by a number of people and these courses are called massive because their enrollment is open for bigger number of students in comparison to traditional educational systems these are certain initiatives which began in the year of 2012 when mit and harvard to these uh, very big institutions uh, took forward the same things uh, one example is here like edx it was released in 2013 then some other uh, examples are also here like coursera which were released and which emerged for the use of masses enrollments so an evolution of open educational resources initiatives in india have also been there 
with the backdrop of an emerging knowledge based economy so what are the components here because these oers have been able to democratizing uh, different uh, lifelong learning spaces in uh, a democracy like india then some policy instruments have been there by mhrd or unesco or iflas and some other uh, bodies at national and international level along with the social implications with, with the social empowerment the use and application of textual or audio visual platforms has been really much very much helpful for sustainable and integration of the formal curriculum what are different worldwide platforms for example we can take here open education consortium which is non profit and global in nature and it works with its member to build capacity to find reuse create and share open educational resources another example is unesco and this has uh, given certain uh, guidelines and some coalition partners are commonwealth of learning creative commons international council for open and distance education uh, joseph stefan institute these are certain members and which have been uh, very much Uh, contributing uh, for the open educational resources the, the sir, some examples are here for example i have shared what kind of savings have been there we can see here on the screen 250000 dollars this was a saving one case study has been shared here then saving uh, students 5 million dollars uh, over 5 years one example from maricopa county community college district it is also here then this novas oer based general education it is also shared so but it has been the glorious past in the education field we should lead towards a smart future and how it is possible we can see different figures are here where it is shown like student secondary or high school student at different levels which are given here this is uh, then what open education can be described a few examples are taken here one by anka uh, multer access to higher education innovation and quality these are few words then if we start with the department this is one example from donna godet i would say it's engaging it's energizing rewarding community building so these are few aspects which people have shared on different platforms regarding the open education we can see how different popular subjects have been uh, proliferated related with the open learners different subjects are given here for example this coursera courses which are uh, uh, a big education platforms and it partners with top universities and organizations then edx courses they are also very much popular and we can see names of uh, very uh, so many international organizations here which have been collaborating then odacity courses and we can see that more than 190 countries uh, were enrolled and when uh, odacity was born when we talk about indian context we can see here ugc moocs this example is given here then what is the ger and position of india in uh, this in the context of this cross enrollment ratio across asia the average gross enrollment ratio is 30% in china more than 39% ger in tertiary education when we think about india it is 23% then this national skills qualifications framework come into picture it is a competency based framework for organizing different qualifications according to the levels of knowledge skills and aptitude and it is a government of india initiative we can see the notification ugc uh, has issued this ns uh, qf notification what are different levels definitely graded from 1 to 10 and these are defined in terms of learning outcomes and whatever the learner must possess is related with the uh, obtaining from formal informal or non formal ways and nos are their national occupational standard which are related with the 
effective performance in a job role at early stage which have been uh, delivered through sayo nine national coordinators have been there like aicte and ptel ugc cec ncert nios ignu iimb and nitt tr so these many organization have been there at the initial level and this is the example of when ugc uh, came out with this swayam examination in november 2019 since then all these activities have been there in our country this nationwide coverage has been there for acceptance and adopting the moocs through a part of swayam and it happened on 27th february 2020 last year by ugc and it uh, there are more than 900 universities which have been facilitating this credit mo mobility among these 137 has been facilitating and swayam courses there are more than 500 courses and these are available in regional languages as well and uh, we can see more than uh, 2007 they have completed and this was launched in 2017 and it has big uh, it could have become the world largest mooc provider so what are the complex structure to simplify the open education so collaboration as common thread comes into picture and share responsibility so we can see here what are different components the basic component is the designing and implementing which invite attention and participation of instructors and faculty members and this creates the an uh, the environment which is related with the constructivist pedagogy and it finally leads to scenario based learning approach so this kind of uh, step is required for initiating with the collaboration as common thread and responsibility there are certain challenges which are associated with oers given by horn anderson and pirik in uh, 2018 like concrete tools methods to locate evaluate and curate there may be satisfaction but decreasing students costs and individual needs of users also how to measure the quality and address the quality of oer is another concern why what are the reasons and related responsibilities definitely to create awareness at larger level and understanding those needs potential and what are the possible benefits from the oers with the help of uh, different platforms as we all are considering it as a new media for learning and bridging the gap in the various types of education system which exist in the shape of formal non formal or any other kind of way so what are different attributes we can see here no cost access further adaptation adaptations or degree or extent of openness which really uh, brings the copyright licensing and some other kind of attributes in picture for the course of open scholarship so it should be under an open license scheme so the collaborators practices and developments are really related with the collaboration and design then leading to approaches and pedagogy finally uh, growing towards the development of oer which really uh, take insights from iterative analysis design development and implementation which really brings again into picture what are the instructional material which have been taken for the usage what is the pedagogical approach and how it is related with the design based research approach for the open education system what may be the four stages for design based uh, research approach analysis solution testing and refinement and definitely reflection so these were given by karuna naika and naidu in 2017 and which are still very much useful so the collaborative mechanisms which are here in the form of reuse revise remix and creation and finally leading to content centric approach to context centric with the constructivist approach so why it is important because it is not the content for which it is being created or anything being facilitated it is the context means 
the user, the learner, those people in the society who feel deprived or who feel some kind of formal education system is incapable of satisfying their education needs. So the context is that. So these kind of approaches are being developed and implemented. What may be the advantages? As we can see here, hidden potential, applications and different contexts and transformation and innovations at different levels. So to instill the access to educational material, then find uh, creating the sense of equity among the scholar, which is one of the basic reason for open education. And what may be the principles of outcome-based education? So these are certain factors which really have been able to provide a classification of benefits in the shape of qualitative benefits and quantitative benefits, which relate with the enhancing scholarly learning, faculty approaches, academic outcomes, and different kind of productivity, catalyzing changes, and supporting non-traditional learners in the current environment. What are different available technologies, usage, and OER? This technology enhanced learning is very much there. How? Because uh, we can see different metadata schemas and the uh, mechanisms which are inherited from multilingualism, multiculturalism, and pluralism. And these are very much helpful to provide the sense of equity, access to education with the open movement. But there comes the authenticity and validity of OER in picture. What, what may be the student's per perceptions, whether they are satisfied with the learning mechanisms or the outcomes, the kind of learning they have received, whether it is uh, helpful in making them useful for a job description, what is the quality of those open educational material, and how this technology is playing a role in integration and training of those students with the help of interactive sessions and what may be the future sustainability. So there are certain models for evaluation, which may be organizational, technological, structural, and funding methods, also with the value chain configuration and finally leading to sustainable environment. These are certain examples from India and global uh, platforms for OER. And the design and facets are related with leveraging the open web, then fostering multi-stakeholder partnerships, working with open content and engaging professional learning as an open practice. We can see here this picture of B campus open education initiatives, which shows different components, mechanisms, coordination among uh, the education system. Here the libraries come into picture because the libraries are meant for uh, not only providing the information services, but also creating awareness with the help of networking and community development, because libraries are really very strong in advocating and advising for different capacity building and training uh, aspects with the implementation support and providing the consultancy services for the people. So it is about the beginning, how these OERs came into picture with the help of UNESCO's and what are implementation support, which relate to five areas of action for building capacity, then developing supportive policy, encouragement of inclusive and equitable quality, nurturing the creation of sustainability models and facilitating definitely international cooperation along with monitoring and reporting at different levels. So how people can find this is one example for smart search. The Merlot system provides a very uh, so many curated online and learning support materials. Also, this is another example. Uh, Honorable uh, Minister uh, Shri Pokharyalji integrated this campaign last year by uh, sharing ideas and suggestions. It was on 11th April 2020. Then some examples related with UGC and uh, National Digital Library uh, last year. So we can see even in COVID uh, scenario, uh, the UGC and other bodies from India has been very much capable in creating environment opportunities for the students. So 
whenever there are questions where I can learn more about open education, there are certain platforms uh, I'm sharing here. And the future, which is uh, related with the edX perspective, I'm sharing here in CAN. This is uh, MOOCs predict the future of online education shared by Jonathan Shaw in year 2019. So transforming our world, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development mentioned 17 global de uh, sustainable development goals, which would transform the world by 2030 and which is related with open education scenario. So while concluding, I would like to share that whatever efforts have been uh, made at global level or in Indian context with the example of Swayam or Moodle, definitely they have been motivating and guiding forces because the sense of education or equity are really related with each other and which are very much relevant and required for the current generation as well as the future times when we are facing technological issues or COVID-19 like situations and some other societal problems. So we can see these open education uh, and open access resources have the capability for creating educational opportunities and radical transformation of the society. Thank you.